Hey guys, Mel the Train Shooter here and it's the end of Flocking February, our mad mammoth flocking session and all the experiments. So, what have we learned? Well, we've learned there's lots of different ways to flock stuff. <laughs> yeah, I, I approached these set of experiments with the idea that what I wanted to do was find ways of producing thin gaming boards with very little or zero warp. Yeah, but could also stand up to the play of like, you know, club play. Yeah, and on that basis we started and we went through a load of uh, various experiments comparing PVAs, mixing, paint with glue, sp spray, all sorts of stuff. And let's quickly talk through them. Now, PVA, first and foremost. Yeah, obviously the neat stuff and the watered down stuff, that for gluing it down, that for sealing it. Yeah, PVA is king, there's no doubt about it, yeah. It's cheap, it's easy to use, the finish it gives is really, really solid, you know, you can uniformly rely on the results you get from PVA. Yeah, it has got the downside of the shrinkage and overuse can cause warping with thin boards and stuff like that, so it's something to bear in mind, but it is definitely, what you call it, usable. Now, another thing that we tested was mixing PVA with paint as a way of adhering the flock down to the boards. And surprisingly, paint on its own actually gave quite reasonable adhesion. Yeah, paint with a bit of PVA mixed in, roughly perhaps one-fifth PVA. Yeah, that actually was really good. You know, the adhesion on that was really good as sticking the flock down. So that's definitely something to consider if you've got to flock large areas and paint them as a way of getting your base colour down, but at the same time reducing the amount of PVA you're putting on the board. You know, the paint won't cause, cause the warping, the PVA will. So if you can reduce that PVA, you'll reduce that chance of warping. Yeah, so if you've got really large areas to, to what shall it, to, to flock, yeah, and you want a uniform coverage, you can go down. You can put it down with the paint, so that's definitely an option. Yeah, with a, and definitely with a combination of PVA. Moving on from that, the next thing that we looked at was hairspray. Yeah, one as an adhesive and two as a sealant. As an adhesive, yeah, it didn't hold it down. It held it in place slightly. Yeah, enough for you to be able to seal it with something that will hold it down. But as an actual glue, yeah, it, it's not up to what it. This comes from the railway community, uh, like a lot of our, our terrain ideas and that sort of stuff. And the one thing you've got to remember about the railway community is they don't handle their displays that much. They set them up, they sit back, and it's very much a look, don't touch. Whereas with war game scenery, yeah, we're digging them out of boxes, putting them on tables, moving them around, moving miniatures over, putting them back, and it's this backwards and forwards. So they get handled a lot. Yeah, so hairspray on that basis isn't any use as a glue. You had to glue it down, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, as a fixative, yeah, it can be used as a fixative, but there's a couple of problems. One, it's still water-soluble and very water-soluble, so if any moisture gets on it, yeah, you're going to have problems. Two, there's a, a glossing effect that one of the commenters pointed out, one of the trainiacs pointed out. Uh, what was it called? One of the two. Yeah, someone pointed out, yeah, that if you rub it, you get a gloss effect. And when I went back to look at the video, I could see clearly where that was. And obviously, you know, for displays that aren't going to be touched, fine. Yeah, if it's war game scenery like stuff like this, where we're holding it by the base, yeah, you're going to end up with frosting thumbprints. So, not really suitable to be truthful. Obviously, if you've got a big display piece, yeah, that sits at the end of a table, yeah then this would work, yeah, but if it's going to be handled, you don't really want this. Now, the other thing that we looked as a way of adhering things down was we we looked at, what do you call it, spray rubber glue. And it's quite interesting, you know, first time I've used it, played with it, we've had a few experiments with it, it gives a good adhesion, okay, it's messy, yeah, and trying to control where it goes is a lot more challenging than with the PVA or the other sort of ways of adhering things down. But, it gives a good adhesion, it gives a very natural patchy effect and the adhesion and thickness of how well it's stuck down and how thick the flock is, you know, you can watch what you can sort of improve by pressing down on it. I've been playing with rolling a balloon over it because a balloon will press down quite evenly, yeah, without pressing too hard into it. Yeah, and that's where I need even pressure and just rolling it round with my hand on top and that's got some good results. Uh, 
So it's definitely usable. Now it's zero warping. So for thin boards that you want to texture, that you want to flock up quickly and get a more realistic tone, yeah, something like this, then sealed with watered down PVA, yeah, does really work. Works really well. Uh, so definitely. Now these cans are about a, a quid a can, and I reckon you could do a six foot by four foot table with one of these. So expense wise, it's not really expensive to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I know we talk about expense and how cheap PVA is, but you know, in the grand cosmos of things, you know, it's not really that more expensive. Now the final one was uh, spray clear matte varnish. Now uh, James Evans, one of the Terraniacs, he was a Terraniac, although he probably mentioned it in the comments. <laughs> hey ho. Uh, he said I've been sealing. He, he does pro stuff. Uh, he he says I've been sealing. What you call it? His what you call it? His terrain with clear matte varnish. He started off with aerosol cans and then moved on to the airbrush. I'm not up to that up to that stage with my airbrush yet. I'm still learning with it. I broke it, believe it or not. Again. So I picked up some cans and thought I'd give it a try. And I've got to say the results are very very good. Yeah, it's a really solid protective. Yeah, it does give a slight darkening, yeah, as you would expect with, you know, a heavy coating of a matte varnish, yeah, but nothing that's a game changer, yeah, and nothing to be truthful that anyone would notice unless they knew what they were looking for. You know, i.e. if they spent their life surrounded by various flocks, etc., and finishes on terrain. Uh, it's incredibly tough. Now, price-wise, I was picking these up for roughly a pound a can, and I reckon that, through my experiments, I reckon you could seal something like that, yeah, for about 50p's worth. So when we talk about expense, yeah, obviously PVA is cheaper, but once again, I mean, if you're doing your own, just one terrain set for you, and you want to give it a really tough coating, you know, then five quid for a set of cans, do the lot, you know, makes sense, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I can understand not using it from a commercial point of view or it'd be cheaper through an airbrush, you know, and everyone's saying PVA is great, and I love PVA. I, you know, I genuinely do love PVA. But I can definitely see the advantages of this. Now, so that's rounding it all up. Coming away from that, yeah, uh, one thing that we did pick up on was, obviously, this is zero warp, and this is zero warp because there's no PVA glue in them. So if you want thin terrain boards with a patchy realistic look yeah that are tough to play on for a club environment yeah spray it first with that put your flock down push it down let it seal give it a good hammering with that yeah and you've got an amazing terrain board obviously if you want to carry on as usual with your pva there's nothing wrong with that and the result all the tests have shown it's a damn good product pro quality product which is why we as war gamers and everyone else in scenery land, railway land, diorama land, arts and crafts land, yeah, love PVA. And I used to remember the guy who, I used to remember the guy's name who made it, hero, utter hero. But anyway, that was the flocking February roundup, that's all the results from what we've learned from all of this. Uh, I am going to do some more experiments, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do those in the background, have a play, and then I'm going to bring you results in a more concise way, yeah, and keep updating this little terrain lab sort of playlist of ours, and also look at a few other things and that sort of stuff, you know. I do do a lot of experiments, I do mess around with a lot of terrain and play with, you know, various ideas and that sort of stuff, and I think the idea of having a dedicated place for my experiments rather than my tutorials is, a, you know, where I'm showing you stuff specifically. It's, it's a good idea, so I'm going to stick with that. Right, finally, uh, you've heard me mention the Terraniacs. It's the Facebook support group, guys. Yeah, link's in the description. Come along, check it out. It's an awesome group. There's over 200 of us, or, or non-commercial. All of us are hobbyists, from first-time builders to pro builders. Yeah, and we're just posting that stuff and helping each other out. So, and then finally, let's close this up. I really hope you found this stuff interesting. I'm sorry about flocking you off with so much flock over February, it's just the way it's rolled. If you've liked this video, then obviously like it. If you know someone who you think you watch it, it'll be useful to, then give it a share. Got anything to add? Got any suggestions you'd like to see for future experiments? Any other products? 
techniques, throw them in the comments, guys. Got any questions? Fire them in the comments. You know I also always answer my comments. And, you know, if you really want to support what I do, you know, and g give me a bit of a help out, check the Patreon link. And if it's your thing, you know, give it a go. If not, no worries. Right, uh, plenty more coming up. We are getting well into the White House build. We have core kills coming up and loads more. So, guys, I'm going to leave you with it. That's me done. And relax, February's over. I'll see you in March. All the best, guys. Ta-ra.